Nonviolence resists in both constructive and obstructive modes. That is, by creating solutions, including parallel institutions, and by standing in the way of injustice. Know when to use which. So this discovery of constructive program was one of the real great breakthroughs of Mahatma Gandhi, and it is catching on among people who are socially active today. You realize that if you do your part of the work, well, you know, partly by working on your own community where it needs to be improved, working on your own self where you can do with some improving, uh, and then creating what you want instead of demanding other people to give it to you, that makes the rest of the nonviolence work much, much easier. There still will be places where you need to resist, but when you've done your constructive part first, you're in a much stronger position strategically to do that resisting, that standing in the way. One example springs to mind of some group that failed to do this. It was an insurrectionary group in Peru years ago called the Sendero Luminoso. And they killed and killed and wrecked and destroyed things, but they never demonstrated any capacity to build anything. And finally, the Peruvian people simply rejected them. So let's not make that mistake. Always look for constructive solutions first, and then go on to the resistance. You know, most of the time, what you see is people doing it exactly the opposite way.